Hello guys, so in this video, let us look at how we can implement the supervisor multi-agent architecture. So in this architecture, we define agents as nodes and add a supervisor node that can decide which agent node should be called next. So we can use the command class to route execution to the appropriate agent node based on the supervisor's decision. So this is what I want to build. So you can see that we have a supervisor agent at the very uh, top and this supervisor agent has four different agents underneath him. So we have the enhancer agent, we have the researcher agent, the coder agent and the validator agent. Okay. So if the user prompt, if the supervisor agent thinks that the user prompt is not really clear, if it is not vague, if it is a little vague, in that case, the supervisor agent can always employ, it can always use this enhancer agent to make the prompt better, it, to rephrase it better. Okay, so, so right after the enhancer is done with the enhancer's work, the control flow is going to come back to the supervisor agent again. So now the supervisor knows, okay, the prompt is better. Now it's going to look, okay, so does this particular prompt require research from the internet? In that case, it's going to, you know, it's going to hand it off, hand off the control to the researcher. So once the researcher is done, it's going to come back. And the same thing for coder as well. So if there is a particular problem that requires some code to be written, in that case, you know, the control, the supervisor can hand off the control to the coder agent and the coder agent can actually use an actual tool, okay, that tool we are going to be looking at, that tool is going to actually uh, execute code, okay, it's going to take the output and uh, give it, okay, so that is also something that we will look at. And then finally, we have the validator agent, okay, so right before ending this workflow, the validator agent is just going to check if the user's question and the final answer is actually relevant or not. Okay, so this is what we are going to be building out. So let's actually, without wasting any more time, jump into the code. So right here, you can see that these are some very standard imports that I'm doing, right? I'm importing, you know, pedantic because there are some structured outputs that we might have to do. And then we have human message, the tabulate tool, the command class to direct the flow of the graph. We have the state graph and then look at this part. Okay. So there is actually a pre-built graph that lang graph provides for us to build a react agent. Okay. So, uh, if you remember a couple of, uh, you know, videos before, uh, in the react agent, we actually built out the react agent from scratch, right? So we can always use that particular graph and then embed it into this bigger graph. We can always do that. But if you don't want to do that, that is absolutely fine. Uh, Lang graph provides a pre-built class. Okay. A method. So this is going to, you can see that it creates a graph that works with a chart model that utilizes tool calling. So you can just provide, okay, the prompt, your problem statement, you can provide the tools, and then that is going to start, you know, uh, looping through the, uh, the thought action observation, thought action observation, it's going to return the final answer. So uh, in this, uh, to, in this video, let's also explore that. Okay, great. And then we have the IPython, we, we are loading the environment variables. And then this is going to be the second tool that we are going to be using. So if you remember, I told you that this coder agent is going to have one tool, right? So that tool can actually execute code. So this is going to be that particular tool. Okay. So it's going to be the tool for running Python code in a REPL. So if I go in here, you can see that it is a tool for running Python code in a REPL, right? All right. So I'm taking it from Langchain Experimental. You probably would not have it installed already. So go ahead and install that as well. Perfect. All right. So coming down, these are very, uh, so we're initializing the LLM. And then we're initializing the tabli search and then we're initializing the python ripple tool as well okay so if i go ahead and run this okay so you can see that we are getting five as an output okay so you can imagine that there might be some cases where the llm just writes the code and then it might ask you know uh, it might actually use this particular tool to you know better get accurate answers all right so i hope this makes sense before i continue forward with explaining the rest of the code so you can see that I've already gone ahead and created the supervisor node. Okay. And then uh, I've created the enhancer node, uh, the research node, the code node, right. And finally, we must also have the validator node as well. So I've already created all of these nodes, but before I actually move on to explaining each and every single node, I first want to show you the graph. Okay. So this is the graph that we have. So this is very similar to what I showed you, right? So we have the supervisor node up here. We have the enhancer. So if the supervisor wants the prompt to be enhanced, it's going to come here and then it's going to uh, report back to the supervisor. 
okay so if the supervisor needs research okay so it's going to go to the researcher node and right after the output is done okay the control flow is going to go to the validator okay so what this validator agent is going to do is it's going to look at the output of the researcher and then it's going to check does this answer the user's question if it does we are going to return it if it does not return it we are going to send it back to the supervisor maybe there is another problem that we have to solve maybe there is a coding problem in that case the coder is going to you know give the answer and then we are again checking validating that does this have the answer to the user's question if it does not have the answer then we are again going to send it to the supervisor okay so this is going to be the graph so as you can see i've got a couple of different examples example prompts okay so this is one problem and i've got another problem here whether in chennai and then i've got another problem give me the 20th fibonacci number okay so let's let's actually you know you can imagine that this particular code is going to make use of the coding agent right so let me actually go ahead and run it and show you the output okay so p print is not defined okay and that is not running because okay let me just copy copy and put it over here okay because i don't want to run that particular block right now okay so now this should work all right great so we actually have the answer right here so let's actually see what happened so the workflow initially transitioned from the supervisor to the coder okay the supervisor correctly figured out that this particular problem requires the coder agent so that is why the supervisor is first saying the user is requesting a specific numerical result from a well defined sequence okay the fibonacci sequence which is best served by calculating the value using a coding implementation the problem is clear and structured making it appropriate to move it directly to the coder for computation okay so if i had like you know given some vague prompt in that case uh, the supervisor probably would have gone for the prompting agent okay so uh, you know this particular agent enhancer agent but since it's already well defined it is going to direct it to the coder so now it is coming to the so you can also imagine why are we using human message here so we are hu using human message as the output of the supervisor because we are sort of like simulating that each of these agents are actual human beings right okay supervisor is a human all these different people are different agents human agents that's why i'm using human agent here all right so the next thing is the coder is going to output this thing okay the 20th fibonacci number is 6765 so uh, we we can't really look at the tool called right now so for that i am going to go to langsmith okay so i am going to go to the first uh, run okay so you can see that okay this is what we provided right give me the 20th fibonacci number so the first one was was the supervisor the supervisor you know directed the control to the coder right so you can see that go to his coder so the next thing is the coder so right here you can see that uh, the coder agent is actually calling the tool and it is providing the input query for the tool as well so it basically wrote the uh, you know fibonacci calculation program it also provided 20 instead of this because that is what the human initially wanted right that was the initial prompt so it's provided this thing and then finally you can see that it is going to you know coming down you can see that it is calling the python repl tool right so it's calling the python repl tool and the python repl tool is outputting 6765 which is again going to be fed to the agent right so it's again going to be fed to the agent so if i come down here you can see that it is actually saying the 20th fibonacci number is 6765 and finally the validator is also confirming that this is actually good okay the answer correctly identifies the 20th fibonacci number addressing the user's request so now that we understand you know what problem this architecture solves let's quickly go through you know uh, the different nodes that i've written so initially we have the supervisor node that i've written right here okay so i've defined the supervisor node and i'm also structuring the output of the supervisor node okay so i'm telling uh, give me back two different properties so i need the next agent to direct the flow to and then i also need a reason why you think that the next uh, agent is it could be enhancer or researcher or coder okay so i'm just giving a description as well so use enhancer when the user input requires clarification use researcher when you need additional facts use coder when some problem solving is required okay so accordingly it's going to produce either this or this or this and it's also going to give some reason why it thought that okay let's say we need to go to coder okay so detailed justification 
All right. So this is going to be the prompt. I'm providing a lot of different uh, information like, you know, you are a supervisor managing a team of three agents, prompt enhancer, researcher and coder. Your role is to orchestrate everything, provide clear, concise rationale for each decision. These are the three team members, you know, the prompt enhancer, researcher, coder. These are your responsibilities, right? I'm saying analyze each user's request and agent's response for completeness, accuracy and relevance. Route the task to the most appropriate agent at each decision point. Maintain workflow momentum by avoiding redundant agent assignments. Continue the process until the user's request is fully and satisfactorily resolved. Okay, your objective is to create an efficient workflow that leverages each agent's strengths while min minimizing unnecessary steps, ultimately delivering complete and accurate solutions to user's request. So this is going to be the system prompt. Okay, so this is going to be the first system message. And then I'm going to append the uh, conversation history. Okay, so right here. And then I'm going to, you know, um, use this particular, you know, structured output. I'm providing this pedantic model. And why am I doing that? Because I want the output of the supervisor to always have this next and reason. So that is what I'm extracting right here. So once I have the go to and the reason as well. Okay, so the reason I can just provide it, I can just add it as a message in the list messages list and then I'm going to use this go to to use uh, I mean I can put it in this go to uh, keyword parameter and I can use the command class right so that I can control the direction I can control the flow to whichever agent that the supervisor wants to go to all right so that is it for the supervisor node so coming down we also have the enhancer node the enhancer node basically okay this is what it does it improves and clarifies the user query it takes the original user input and transforms it into a more precise actionable request before passing it to the supervisor so this is going to be the system prompt okay you're a query refinement specialist okay you are going to analyze the original query identify the key intent what is the user actually you know asking for and then we have resolving any ambiguities or confusions without requesting additional user input, expanding underdeveloped aspects of the query with reasonable assumptions, right? Restructuring the query for clarity and actionability. So we're um, we're also saying that never ask questions back to the user. Instead, make informed assumptions and create the most comprehensive version of the request possible. So we are going to do the same thing again. This is going to be the system prompt. We are providing the entire history again. And now we are going to, you know, invoke the LLM. Whatever is going to be the output, I'm just going to append it as a human message. And I'm also going to provide a name this time. Okay, so I'm going to provide the name enhancer. The same thing I would have done in the supervisor as well. Okay, so I'm providing the name as supervisor. But we are not going to be using AI message. We can do it. Nothing is going to happen. But I'm just going to consider all these different agents as humans. So that is why I'm using the human message and then I'm providing the name as well. All right. So right after the enhancer, what do we want to do? We always want to go back to the supervisor, right? We can't, we can't go, go to the end, right? After the enhancer, we always need to go back to the supervisor. So that is why I have added this as a default value. All right. I hope that makes sense. Let's move on. So now we have the research node. So the research agent node gathers information using the Tavili search. It takes the current task, performs relevant search and returns findings for validation. Okay. So here I'm going to be using the react agent. As I said already, we can use the graph that we've already built or we can use this pre-built class that Langgraph provides as well. Okay, so here I'm providing the LLM that I want to use, the tools that are available to the React agent and then this is going to be the initial prompt. Okay, so I'm saying identify key information needs based on the query context, gather all the information, optimize the findings, okay wherever you know you you want to cite the sources when possible you can do that to establish credibility focusing exclusively on information gathering avoid analysis or implementation provide thorough factual responses without speculation where information is unavailable okay so this is going to go crawl the internet it's going to you know do a couple of loops okay and then it's going to return the entire state again right here so that is what this particular invoke is going to do. And this is going to return the entire state with a messages list, right? So we're just going to take the last AI message that this particular agent would have returned. And then I'm going to take the content alone and I'm going to append it to our list. Okay, so to our messages list, I'm going to append it right here. Okay, so right after the research agent is done with its work, we are now going to the validator. 
okay so this also we are hard coding right here because if the research agent has done its job properly in that case if the validator gives the sign off okay if it gives the green light we can just end the workflow okay so now let's go to the validator okay so uh, validator is somewhere down here in the middle we also have the code node okay it's very simple you are a coder and an analyst focus on mathematical calculations analyzing solving math problems right right so calculations okay so uh, we are again providing the python rebel tool as well the same thing and whatever result that we get we are going to take the latest ai message right and then i'm going to add it as a human message and append it to our list and again i'm going to go to the validator okay i hope that makes sense and finally we have the validator okay so we have the validator node we are using a couple of prompts for the validator okay so we are saying that first review the user's question the first message in the workflow and then review the answer which is the last message and just make sure that and we're just saying that if the answer addresses the core intent of the question okay finish it or else or else route back to the supervisor okay so that is what we're saying right here so either it needs to output supervisor or finish okay so that is what we are providing right here and in addition to providing it right here we are also using a pedantic model and we are for further you know forcing it to only provide supervisor or finish so specifies the next worker in the pipeline supervisor to continue or finish to terminate the reason for this decision here as well so as i told you we only need the first user's question and the last answer right so that is exactly what we're doing right here in this node so we're taking the first human question okay and then we're taking the last answer that is supposedly the final answer so we are going to take the user's question and the agent's answer and we are going to provide all of this to the llm and then we're also you know providing the validator pedantic model as well so right here if the llm returns go to is finish in that case we can end the graph but if for some reason it does not provide finish okay for some reason this final answer does not have the full answer to the user's question in that case we need to go to the supervisor again so that is what i've put right here all right so i hope that makes sense so far we built out all the different nodes now all that is left is to combine put it all together into a graph so that is exactly what i have done here i'm adding all these different nodes and then i'm compiling it as well okay so that is why we have this final graph right here which looks pretty good so coming down let's actually go ahead and implement this other example that we have so the user is asking for weather in chennai so in this case you know uh, the researcher agent is going to kick in right you can imagine because researcher is the one access to the tabli search tool right so let's actually go ahead and run this okay great so you can see the supervisor is handing off control to the researcher why the user has requested information about the weather in chennai which requires collecting current data the task is best handled by the researcher who can gather updated information so this is the reason that the supervisor is providing and using the command we are directing the uh, the flow to the validate i mean the researcher now what is the researcher saying the current weather in chennai is as follows it is providing the it is calling the tabli search tool it is providing the information right here and then finally the validator okay so the answer provides a detail current weather this thing okay so that is it so we have the final answer right here and that is it guys this is how we can build out the supervisor agent architecture system so um do go ahead pull the code run it by yourself try putting in different uh, prompts so there might be some prompts that that might not work and that might require some tweaking uh, in the prompt okay so that might require some changing prompts here and there according to the problem that you are trying to solve and that is something that i will leave you to explore and that is it for this particular section i will see you in the next one